Joseph Heinrich is um, the head of the scientific IT systems group at the Forschungszentrum Jülich in Germany. And he will be giving a talk on the uh, visualization system uh, GR, uh, on the GR si visualization system. Okay, <laughs> thanks. <coughs> Welcome. <coughs> So, okay, first of all, thank you for coming here this morning. My name is Joseph Heinen, and together with my colleagues, uh, I'm working on different projects at Forschungszentrum Jülich. Most of them are visualization systems, <clears throat> and I'm proud to have the opportunity to give this talk here <clears throat> at EuroPython about GR, a framework for visualization systems. So let me start with a question. Who is already using some scientific software with Python, such like uh, Matplotlib, Mojave, VTK, or... Okay, that's a big number. Uh, as mentioned, I'm working at a research company, and in the past years, uh, it turned out that, uh, they are a growing, that there is a growing need for better and faster uh, visualization software, uh, especially uh, scientists uh, need easy to use methods uh, for visualizing two and three dimensional data sets, possibly with a dynamic component. And they want to create publication quality graphics and videos for their publications, probably in the internet. And they want to make glossy figures uh, for high impact journals or press releases. Uh, at a first glance, uh, those methods don't seem to be uh, very challenging, but uh, uh, we are talking about that later. Uh, there are a lot of scientific plotting me methods we, we need, uh, such as line bar graphs, curve plots, scatter plots, all these things you see on this slide here. Uh, in principle, this is nothing challenging, and there are dozens of solutions for all these kinds of plotting methods. Uh, there are also powerful software libraries for scientific uh, applications in Python. Uh, those listed here on this slide are the most popular ones, I think. Maybe I've forgotten uh, one, but uh, we all know Matplotlib, which is the, the workhorse and the de facto standard uh, concerning graphics in, in, in Python. And there's even Mojave for, for three-dimensional applications. Mojave, which is very powerful and based on VDK, and it offers an application interface uh, called MLab, which can be used in your own scripts. Uh, there's VTK, it's very versatile, but it's uh, difficult to learn because it's a very low-level system. And we have tools like uh, Wispy and OpenGL, which are both very fast and uh, which are limited to 3D and uh, which are really the lowest level APIs for, for graphics with Python. And there are also some GUI tools, just like, just like uh, QWT, uh, with its corresponding 3D equivalents. And the problem with this is that they are currently uh, un unmaintained, at least for uh, what my information is. So there are some problems so far. And uh, the main problem, I think, is that the 2D world and the accelerated 3D world are separated. Uh, you won't find a tool which uh, provides services for both 3D and uh, 3D, uh, 2D and 3D graphics. And uh, another problem is that some graphics backends only produce kind of figures. So it's not possible to present, present continuous data streams uh, from, from, from live sources. And uh, also, I've ex uh, made the uh, experience that there's only a bare minimum level of interoperability. So user interaction is somehow limited with, with these tools. Also, if we are talking about uh, analyzing large data sets, uh, we often uh, see that there's only a poor performance. And uh, also these APIs are partly device and platform independent, so your own scripts uh, will suffer from some system dependencies after the time. Okay, so let's Python get up and running and push for Python. There is a very nice distribution which has been introduced to you in the 
in the in the keynote this morning it's called Anaconda, and uh, I can re I would really like to recommend this distribution as it's very easy uh, to install a complete scientific Python stack. Uh, but uh, I think uh, we need something more. Uh, for example, we need some more performance and. Uh, this can also be achieved by uh, Anaconda add-ons, for example, Number, which has also be mentioned this morning, which is capable of accelerating Number uh, or your uh, Python applications uh, based, uh, which which contain NumPy code, even on GPU hardware or multi-core processors. Uh, and I will give some example later. Uh, there's something more. We also want to achieve uh, more graphics performance and interoperability. And for this purpose, uh, I would like to introduce our GR framework, which is a uni frame, universal framework for cross-platform visualization. And the main keys, key points are that it has a procedural graphics backend, so you can really present continuous data streams, and it has built-in device drivers, so you can visualize both 2D and 3D scenes in, in, in one canvas. And there's a very good interoperability with uh, GUI toolkits, uh, so you can establish a very good user interaction. And as you can see in the bottom part of the slide, it's also very easy to install. So this would be our complete uh, scientific Python distribution. I think we have everything we need, uh, especially we have more performance and interoperability. So let me give some examples uh, how this looks live. Uh, you can see here uh, a, a numerics uh, simulation of a damped pendulum. The calculation is done in the uh, ACA4 function, you can see, which is simply a numerical integration of this differential, differential equation, and you can see that you can mix graphics with text formulas, and you can do all these things live while your script is running. You don't have to produce figures uh, or something like this. The same works for 3D. You can see it here. In this case, uh, visualization is done with a API which has been written by a colleague of mine, Florian Riem, and he has written a OpenGL layer for GR, which is called GR3. And you see it's very performant and it does its job. You can even, uh, okay. <laughs> you can even uh, visualize live signals fr from, from wave files or from the microphone and with lock X axis and this all runs uh, in real time. These are all things which are very hard to realize with other tools. You can do this also in 3D. I just uh, pushed the audio away so, so you can focus on the, on the graphics. So uh, the frequency uh, spectrum is, uh, in this case, visualized by, by a surface plot which is realized with OpenGL, and it's that fast as you could see. You can also produce graphics with user interaction. Uh, you can see here an MRI, MRI application, which renders some MRI data uh, through a marching cubes algorithm, which is part of our software and which can be rendered very, very fast and uh, moved with the mouse. So let's talk again about performance. We, we only have, uh, we not only have uh, some, some need for, for more graphics performance, but also for, for, for numerical performance. And as mentioned before, uh, there's something called number, which is part of Anaconda, but you also can install it for your own. And there's number pro, which has some additional features. Uh, it's a part of Anaconda Accelerate, <coughs> which uh, costs a few bucks, I don't know the, the actual price, and it's capable of uh, 
calculating uh, NumPy expressions on the GPU, so you can write uh, your own GPU kernels uh, in Python. And it's a very nice tool, and it's worth to, to look at this software. Uh, and there are even other tools uh, like, like Ku, Blast, Ku, FFT, QRAND, but those tools are just uh, dedicated to CUDA hardware. So in this case, you can see how you can profit from such uh, software. You see a uh, particle simulation, which is very slow, currently running at three frames per second. And just by adding some decorators and an import statement for sure, you can increase the performance by uh, times uh, 15, I think. <laughs> So it's, you don't have to change your code, and you can speed up your application enormously. This is calculated in real time. This would not be possible with, with poor Python. If you uh, run this simulation in Python, I think each frame is about three seconds. In this case, it was parallelized or vectorized. vectorized. Uh, this is, uh, I have several examples in our demo suite. Uh, just take a look at the website and you will see how the different uh, optimizations work. So let me introduce some of our success stories. Uh, we have integrated our software in several of our uh, applications. Uh, we are working both for experimental physicists and for, and for theoretical physicists. And this is... Uh, something for our instruments. It's a live display for a small angle neutron diffractometer. And as you could see, you can uh, set the region of interest and the, the surface is generated in real time. You can rotate it, you can flip the axis, uh, and there's even more. And all this can be done in real time. So this is another example. Here we are processing a huge data set, and uh, it's also done in real time. And uh, this was formally done by a proprietary solution, and with a GR framework, we could embed this into a QT4, by QT4 uh, application, which uh, was a replace replacement for the existing solution, and which is much, much faster, which can produce movies and all these funny things. There's another example here. Uh, Nikos, it's a very complex network-based control system, which is used uh, in, at Forschungsreaktor uh, München in Munich uh, uh, for all the instruments which do neutron scattering, and in this case, we replaced uh, by QVT, QWT uh, application uh, with a QTGR application. And it's, it was much faster, it was more responsive, and it, it, was, uh, it had some additional features which, which we didn't have, have before. So this is a case study to see how fast you can simulate data uh, Born is a software for, for simulating uh, neutron and X-ray scattering. Uh, to compare it, uh, it was a replacement for Matplotlib at this point, and it uses a single it uses a single call. It's the line just in the bottom of the left side. And if you look at the old code, uh, if you compare the old source code with the new one. Well, that's uh, only one line and uh, an export statement to generate a movie, for example. So it's not such complicated to produce movies with a GR framework. So what are the conclusions? Uh, the use of Python with uh, our GR framework and uh, Numba and perhaps Numba Pro extensions allows the realization of high-performance visualization applications, both in scientific and technical environments. Uh, and the GR framework can seamlessly be integrated into any Python environment. Uh, I would suggest, suggest to use Anaconda. Uh, the integration is simply done 
by a C types mechanism, so you can also use it in your own Python distribution. And <clears throat> the combination Conda and Anaconda provide a very easy to manage uh, and ready to use Python distribution that can be enha enhanced by the use of our GR framework, uh, especially with its functions for real time or 3D visualization functions. So what's next? Uh, we are not far from uh, implementing a, a molecular dynamics uh, package and which will produce such results. <clears throat> we have already all this stuff written in C <clears throat> and simply have to write some simple wrappers which will then be integrated into our DR framework. And uh, with this framework, you will be able to do things like this here. Uh, this is a simulation which has been calculated on a very big machine and the, the data is read uh, with a simple Python script and then rendered with a GR3 library. You can then export this uh, scene to, for example, Povray and produce a high quality graphics uh, like shown on the right side of the slide. And you can even do this uh, in highest resolution if you give the correct parameters to those routines. And uh, you can see here it's a very realist realistic uh, presentation of a DNA. So what are our future plans? Uh, well, we have thought to combine the power of matplotlib and GR. Uh, and we think it should be possible, and the basic idea is to use GR as a matplotlib backend. So this would speed up matplotlib, uh, and all your matplotlib scripts would profit from this speed up. Uh, I think it's possible. We didn't start this uh, development, but I think we, there's a good chance that we get these things running. Uh, and there are even more challenges. Uh, you learned about Bouquet this morning, and I think this should also be possible. Uh, once we have the matplotlib integration, it should also be possible to connect uh, those scripts to the bouquet backend, which Travis mentioned this morning in the keynote. Uh, at this point, I think we should talk to Travis to cooperate. <laughs> uh, on this slide, you find some resources. There's a website for our framework. There's a Git repo. Uh, uh, it's hosted on the Py package in the index. We even have first Beanstar, other uh, binary distributions for, for the GR framework. And the talk should be online uh, on this link, which you can uh, find out later. So some closing words. Uh, maybe you hate me after this, uh, but I think that's important. Uh, I think that visualization, visualization software could be even better if we uh, the prerequisites of, for an application would be described in terms of usability, responsiveness, and interoperability, uh, instead of a list of software with, with, with uh, module dependencies. We should use native APIs on, on the different systems instead of uh, GUI toolkits, and release updates should not uh, break version compatibility. This is something that I have observed very often. So let me uh, end up and uh, thank you for your attention. Thanks for Rami for this great talk. Any questions? Uh, are there any questions? Uh, one of the features of Matplotlib that I find very convenient is its integration with IPython Notebook because I can play with the visualization before I integrate it into some application or save a high resolution copy for publication or something like that. So I wonder if is GR framework um, compatible with IPython Notebook and I use it from there? Right now it's not, but because there's some discrepancy. Uh, on the other, on the one side, we are talking about uh, immediate mode graphics, and with IPython Notebook, uh, there's just a sequence of commands. And 
maybe if we get our matplotlib uh, uh, backend running as we we consider that it could work then it might be possible to use an ipython but i'm not sure about this thank you we will do our best <laughs> Thanks. I'm doing a lot of training of neural networks inside CYTHON, very, m almost completely outside of Global Interpreter Lock. Would it be possible for me to bind to C APIs or CYTHON APIs that are excluding Global Interpreter Lock, or do I have to bind back through Python then? Because I want to visualize the training of the network during the training process. I think this would be really cool for that. Oh, I'm not sure about this. I think we have to talk about this uh, after the <laughs> session. I'm Are there any more questions? Okay, uh, I have a question. Um, when you use this vectorized decorator uh, and you use the same code in uh, the yeah, limited or the, the basic number version, uh, will this just do nothing or will it co complain with a name error or something or import error? Is this vectorized uh, decorator available? I mean, even if it does nothing in the basic number version. Uh, so, you, you mean if, if it's not present on your machine or? Uh, yeah, 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 okay. I, I mean, I mean, uh, for example, you have this vectorized, which I think I understood only works for the pro version, and uh, if you have only the basic version and no, the, the not difference is that the, the pro version is capable of, of uh, pushing those uh, LLVM code on 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 the on your GPU, and the. the Public version is only capable of parallelizing on your own CPU. Yeah. So the pro version is uh, only needed if you want to use your GPU for the computing of NumPy operations. Yeah. Uh, what I meant is, um, if I have, if I get code from you which has this vectorized decorator, okay. and I, I only have the basic version installed, will it just not vectorize but otherwise ignore the vectorized decorator? Uh, no, this would not work. Okay. So okay. if you use, want to try those demos, you really have to, to purchase the, the pro okay. version. Okay. But there are a lot of other uh, demos which uh, don't uh, depend on, on the pro version. Okay. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Okay. If there are no, okay. Meanwhile, no questions have been added or, okay. So thanks again. Yeah. Thank you.